It's Mark Mason in the Comics Waiting Room, and I am here today with artist Steve Bryant. Steve, hello. Hiya. Uh, a lot of stuff to talk about. You uh, are on a new assignment right now for Boom Studios. What are you doing? I am penciling and inking Steve and Mrs. Peel, uh, the 1960s British TV show, The Avengers. Uh, how did that gig come your way? Um, through me submitting a lot of samples to uh, Boom editor Matt Gagnon. So he, uh, you know, I, like every other artist out there, I pretty much just submit pages whenever I, I have something new. And he was kind enough to, to say, I think we have something that might be appropriate for you. And uh, it turned out to be Stephen Peel, and I worked on, you know, a couple of character likenesses and uh, a sample page, and the licensor liked it. So then they just threw me into the deep end. Now, you, uh, you've uh, been kind enough to, like, show some of your pencil process uh, along the way. Uh, is it difficult to get into, like, doing the period and stuff like that because you are going back that far? No, or? the period is, is, is actually a lot of fun. It, it's cool to, you know, look at the kind of a suit and stuff like that. The tough thing is, um, just like with um, comics that are not based on real people, um, you know, like if somebody's doing the Flash or whatever, it's going to take them a while to kind of get used to doing the costume and the, the particular characteristics of like Barry out of the costume or whatever. It's the same thing with something like Stephen Peel, where it takes a while to break down that visual uh, shorthand of you know the shape of John Steed's face and stuff like that. So it took a little while to, to ramp up to it. So the the period stuff isn't as tough as it is just finding the characters and getting comfortable with. The, the repeated structure and shape that, that you end up with. How far are you into the series right now? Not as far as I'd like to be. <laughs> I, I don't. I don't want to betray any 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 deadline info, but I'm I'm going as fast as I can. And the uh, one of the writers on that, uh, starting out, is Mark Wade. You know, uh, one of the real class A guys in comics. What's it like uh, working with a Wade script? Um. It's surprisingly easy. I, I had no idea what to expect. You know, it's intimidating when, when you're thrown into the water with, with someone that's so established and has such a, a storied history with so many iconic characters. And so, you know, I didn't know what the expectations were, and the script is very artist-friendly. Uh, you know, right at, at the front, Mark had a little note to me, pleasure to be working with you, here's my contact info. Um, you know, drop me a line if you have any questions or ideas. And you know, I had I had a few ideas uh, for little period tweaks that I could throw in visually, and you know, he was excited about all of them. So, I mean, it's obvious to to see why this guy has such a long career because he's, he's a good writer and he's very easy to work with. So I, I have no complaints. Of course, I, I asked you the period question because you you sort of became known as a comic artist because of period work uh, with Athena Voltaire. Yes. And we now know that Athena is returning uh, through uh, Dark Horse Comics. Yeah, um, it's an imprint of Dark Horse called Sequential Pulp. And, uh, yeah, Athena Voltaire, my 1930s globetrotting pulp heroine, uh, we launched originally online and moved over to Ape Entertainment, and now we're landing, so to speak, at, at Dark Horse. And that's next year that that's coming? Yeah, um, I'm still... I, like, I, I just met the... Uh, Dark Horse editor who handles the sequential pulp line, uh, Patrick Thorpe. So I, I met him today, and I turned, I gave my turnover dates to sequential about a month ago. So I don't know exactly what the process is, but I've got deadlines, and they look good. And so I'm hoping that we'll start seeing the material late 2012, early 2013. What kind of material are we going to see? Uh, the first volume is uh, an omnibus that kind of remasters the existing material. Um, it, it was a really tough call for me because my previous collaborator had, had left the book and he had some elements that he wanted to take with him. It was, it was all amicable, but I kind of looked at the fact that I had 200 pages of artwork that were pre pretty much just going to go away when, when the printed, existing printed material went away. And, uh, you know, that represents thousands of hours for me and uh, my colorist, uh, Chad Fiddler and Jason Millay. So I, I contacted uh, Paul Daly, my, my former collaborator, and said, do you mind if I re-script the artwork? Um, you know, kind of excising his uh, stuff that he took with him, his elements. And he gave, his, he gave his blessing on it, so 
I dove into that, and uh, it's kind of nice because I had already had the follow-up graphic novel about halfway done, so I had a pretty good idea of what I could kind of foreshadow and stuff like that. So I wanted to structure it so the omnibus, you, if you've already bought the existing material and you don't want to double dip on a rescripted piece, that's completely fine. You can start with the, the first new graphic novel, The Volcano Goddess, or if you want to start with the omnibus, it's fine. And then uh, what we're looking to follow uh, the first graphic novel up with is the project that you're familiar with, which is a, uh, a prose anthology. Excuse me one sec. <coughs> I was really hoping to avoid coughing on camera, but it's really dry in here and in the <laughs> hotel and stuff like that. But we've got a just a, a prose anthology that's a bunch of short pulp-style stories with... Um, you know, a couple of black and white illustrations per per story, and it's a lot of fun to, to turn over your character to so many different people, and everybody said, oh, I knew immediately the story I wanted to tell, and every one of the stories that everybody submitted is something I would have never thought of in a million years, so it's kind of cool to see yourself and, and so many other writers that immediately had a story that is so far outside of my range, but so, fi so fits the character. So it's a lot of fun. After that, are we going to see maybe a new Athena graphic novel every year, or what? I would plan? like to do two a year. Um, you know, kind of the the pace that I, I asked a number of people who uh, were my readers on like the Facebook Athena page, um, like how often you'd like to see new OGNs, and they all it was almost unanimous of two a year, and I, I think that's probably because we get two Walking Dead trades, two Fables trades, we had two Y trades, so I think that's kind of what the market is trained for. <coughs> Boy, that looks good on camera, doesn't it? I'm so sorry. It's all right. Uh, to do two a year, do you expect you'll draw all them, or do you think that you will uh, find other people to work on the character? What's your plan? I had already commissioned uh, some short stories from some friends of mine uh, that I had written, so I think like one of the one of the graphic novels, uh, because Sequential Pulp wants to do strictly OGNs, not anything with, uh, with individual issues. So I'm kind of formatting for that. Um, so I know that occasionally there will be some where maybe I'll have like a lead novella that will be like 40 pages, and then we'll have you know 40 more pages of, of short stories of the characters' past and stuff like that. Cool. That'll be fun. I hope. Yeah. Well, Steve, thanks for the update, and thanks for talking to us today. Oh, thanks for listening.